Freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward. Earth. And freedom will be defended. Earth. I want to reassure the American people that full, the full resources of the federal government are working to assist local authorities to save lives and to help the victims of these attacks. I was at home asleep when we got the phone call and an editor of mine said that uh, I needed to head out to Barksdale because a plane had crashed into the World Trade Center and they thought it might be an attack on the country. I had heard on the radio uh, that I had turned on in my office that uh, an airplane had apparently hit one of the World uh, Trade Centers. I, I had originally thought that perhaps it was uh, the first one was just a terrible accident, sort of in, uh, like the uh, B-25 bomber that hit uh, the Empire State Building in 1945. That was sort of the first thing that hit my mind. But after the second airplane hit, I realized that this clearly was not an accident, that this was a deliberate action. The president was addressing a class of school children in Florida at the time of the attacks. An aide came over and told him what had happened. And he maintained his composure and waited. He didn't want to alarm the children. Uh, and he waited until their visit was done and then they immediately sna uh, snapped into action and I think he was originally planning on going back to Washington and then they heard that another aircraft was possibly headed that way. My understanding was at that time they decided to come to the closest secure safe location which was Barksdale. The base that morning was already um, uh, on alert because the base was involved in a and an exercise that was a pre-planned exercise that had been going on for, uh, for several days anyway. So the base, uh, was there was already a high level of security. Uh, the air crew members were on alert. Everybody was already at their duty stations due to this pre-arranged exercise. So I remember it being sort of a feeling of uh, you know, disbelief for myself that, um, that what I was seeing on TV was actually happening. And everyone quickly transitioned from this exercise the base was in into uh, the real world uh, handling of, of, of the events that were unfolding. Barksdale is a bomber base located in northwest Louisiana. It's about 22,000 acres. Barksdale opened in its gates in early February 1933. It started out as an army airfield and at the time it opened it was called the world's largest airport. On September the 11th, the, the role of this base was essentially the same as it is today. It was uh, the largest assembly of B-52 aircraft in the world and uh, a major planning base as the headquarters of 8th Air Force and 2nd Bomb Wing. As I heard this story through our wing commander at the time, um, Brigadier General Curtis Bedke, as I said, the base was in an exercise mode already, so we already had a command post that was fully activated and General Bedke was there. And as he later reported, um, when Air Force One was approaching the base and was requesting clearance to land and to clear all the airspace, uh, he asked, well, what is your estimated time of arrival? And right about that time, uh, the people that were on the flight line uh, radioed in and said, it appears that Air Force One is on final approach. So it was very quickly from the moment that the Air Force One announced they wanted to land till they were on the ground. And I remember looking out the window of the headquarters building and seeing, you know, the blue and white aircraft uh, coming in onto the base. And um, at that point, we quickly realized, you know, the president was going to be our was going to be our guest for a while. I know that when I got here, they were already in a full lockdown of the base. They were only letting essential personnel on. And media, of course, we were not considered essential, so we were kept off the base. So the next thing we knew, we were looking at a little monitor in the Channel 12 van, which I was hanging around at that time. And the next thing we saw was the president speaking in front of this podium here with Barksdale Air Force Base under it. That's how we found out about it, that the president was here. We have taken all appropriate, appropriate security precautions to protect the American people. Our military at home and around the world is on high alert status. And we have taken the necessary security precautions to continue the functions of your government. 
We have been in touch with the leaders of Congress and with world leaders to assure them that we will do what is, whatever is necessary to protect America. When Air Force One came in, uh, it was under escort by two um, F-16 fighters um, that were that had been scrambled from Ellington Field in uh, outside of Houston, Texas, to uh, meet Air Force One over the te over the uh, Florida Panhandle, and uh, they were carrying live munitions and were assigned to escort duties. Um, it was interesting that the organization they were from was the 149th Fighter Wing. That was President Bush's old outfit when he was in the uh, Texas Air National Guard. And one of the F-16s landed to refuel while the other one assumed a combat air patrol over the city. So it was, uh, you knew that when you looked up and saw that F-16 on that slow loiter all around the Bossier City area and across the Red River that um, it was armed and it was, you know, clearly had orders to shoot down any, any, you know, any suspicious aircraft. And as soon as they fueled the other one up, the next one took position over the city. And they left, you know, they stayed over the city until Air Force One left and then both continued the escort mission uh, to off at Air Force Base. So it was just uh, the knowledge, you know, we see F-16s and we see military aircraft all the time in this region. But to know that, uh, that that one was on an actual combat air patrol over an American city, it really drove it home that this was anything but a normal day. I don't believe that there was a time in its history that this base was as important in the life of this nation as it was that day. In all of its 68 years of life to that day, this base was there when the President of the United States, the Commander-in-Chief, needed it. It was a safe place to be in case we were attacked again, in case something even worse came down the road. This was <clears throat> a central point. And in fact, within 24 hours, aircraft from this base, were, they were planning missions and heading, deciding where they would head out and go out and begin what we now know as the global war on terror. There really was no sense of, uh, wow, we've participated in history today and uh, it, it's, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take, a, take a moment to uh, reflect on that because there really wasn't any time. We simply moved from exercise to real world mode uh, in the blink of an eye. By the end of the day, everybody was doing their job 110, 120 percent. Whereas at the start of the day, they were doing their job 98 to 100 percent. I mean, things took on a whole new degree of importance and life and death tone that day. Because you saw people jumping out of buildings and you saw the two largest buildings in the world come crashing down in the heart of what was supposedly a very safe and prosperous American city.